Hi, I'm Zayna Juliet. It's Zayna Juliet and Friends. Stay tuned for great conversation and music each week. Hi, my name is Zach Ring. I'm with uh, the GNWP, the Global Women's Narratives Project for a class at USC. And nice. I'm interviewing Zaina Juliet as a part of this project, which looks to uh, combine women's narratives uh, from around the globe into a single database. I noticed that you've been performing since the age of five. What are some of your earliest memories of performing? Oh, wow. You want to know a story? Um, my very first, my very first production, I was uh, cast in my first production. And let me tell you how that happened. Um, I wanted to be a figure skater. And this was when I was, I just turned five, and I was really, a really, really good skater. I wanted to be a figure skater. And so my mother, I remember my mother taking me down to the um, skating, ice skating ring. And, and um, the lady there, because I remember this like really clearly, the lady said, oh my God, there's no market for a black figure skater. We can't, you know, I was the wrong color. And my mother got a little upset. And I said, Mom, that's okay. I'll just be an actress. <laughs> you know, I'll be an entertainer because it's all around my in my family. Um, outside of performance, can you tell me about some of your favorite childhood experiences? What and or who inspired you growing up? I knew what I wanted to do at four. And I, my mother, she began to seek out agents and, and taking me on to uh, interviews and I was cast in my first production as a lead that next week and that was like a really good memory for me and I know that at that moment is where it all began is where it all started is where I knew that was you know what I was destined to be apart from that is being around an entertainment family and uh growing up in a household where there's lots of uh, musicians. A lot of people would come to my home in Los Angeles and uh, I was a little girl, but I remember some very prominent uh, um, artists, you know, in the industry would be there, they would be rehearsing, my uncles, my aunts, everyone was in the music business and film. And so that was a big thing for me and, and the thing that really stood out the most is when my dad would get me out of bed because they would have these big parties with uh, entertainment people and he would get me out of my bed so I could perform. And I think those moments of performing in front of all these adults and uh, dancing on the speakers and singing and uh, that was really, um, those were my most memorable mem great memories of uh, being an entertainer and it spiraled on from there. I stayed on stage every week of my life. I was constantly, constantly performing and to the point where I finally, when I got in sixth grade, I was given my a television show and I was directing and producing it and my school was a set and I loved every moment of it. I love the dancing. I love working with the students, um, the artistry, uh, directing the acting. We did skits, we did music, we did art. You know, it was like a children's show and I loved it. You know, those are my, it, those are my memories of it. being on that stage. Soon as I hit the stage, I was someplace else you know, heading it and leading it and never ever, my main thing was never forgetting my lines, never forgetting. I knew at that age that I had to carry 
the entire production because I was the lead. And then I said to myself, that is my focus. I got to stay with great roles and, and that is what I focused on. I know that was a long answer, but oh, no, I, can great <laughs> I can go on. I could go on. Yeah. Well, I think uh, it, it provides a really good segue to my next question, which is a bit of a two-parter. Mm -hmm. um, how has your relationship with your craft changed over time? What were some of your earliest challenges and discoveries do you remember mm -hmm. had? Oh my gosh. It depends. <laughs> wow. Oh, there's so much. Um, the challenge in the music business is in film, well, both in film and television, it's, I'm in a world of my own. I am in my own lane. I say that all the time. I'm in my own creative zone. So I don't, I've never been one artist or, or actress that was like, my mission was to compete with others, right? So when it was coming back at me, I didn't comprehend to it so well. And a lot of the times, a lot of the hardest things that I went through is competitive. People being competitive and they will stop at no, at nothing to try and sabotage you and sabotage your career. Um, and it's gotten so, it was so bad till I had people completely try to sabotage everything I worked on calling the venues to say, oh, don't work with her. She's going to bring in gangsters or anything to try and sabotage my show so that I wouldn't compete with them. Also, that happened to me in the music business where people would try and block or sabotage because they don't want you to compete with their artists. That's they think that's going to be your competition. It's really, really um, stressful. And um, I went through that a lot lately. And so it's just a matter of surrounding yourself with the right people, but it's so hard to do, to do that. But it's like that, um, the backstabbing, the I've had people try and ruin my reputation by creating horrible lies about me on the internet that was totally made up just so that I, people would really search me, they would see this and they wouldn't hire me, which is horrible. And I've had stalkers. And the gentleman that did that, that tried to bash me on the internet, he was actually a stalker as well. And he was upset because I would join his cult, but of course in the in entertainment industry. And the biggest thing about it um, that I went through, and that is, Mm, I hate to say it, but I have to keep it real. That is the sexual advances. And there's one thing about me, and this is when I started my girl power movement a while ago. I will not sell my soul to anyone. And I would get so far in my career and so far working on a project. And when I go, I go hard. I live, eat and breathe it every day every day, my whole house is a studio. And I get into a project with someone, and this has happened to me at least seven times, with years on each one. And I get into a project and the producer or the people that I'm working with would say, after, I always have the fourth or fifth song too, come into my office, I wanna talk to you. And then here goes the sexual advances. And when I refuse to give into it, there goes more sabotage. And so each time that has happened to me, you know, and I understand this whole Me Too movement, but I don't speak on it too much, but I have my girl power movement. Each time that has happened to me, each guy has told me no girls have ever turned me down. And I'm like, wow, well, I just did. You know, and I think that is the reason why things would take longer for me because I refuse to sell my soul. I call it selling my soul. In unity, flying free. Yeah. Purple fire to our destiny. Oh. We've got laser beam power. We've got symphonic fire.
uh, yes, she is Miss Vegas, and she's uh, almost done. It taught me to learn how to do my own music, write my own songs, produce my own songs, go on the studio. I have bedroom productions. I record my own music. It taught me, okay, so you're gonna do this to me, so you're not gonna dangle in a carrot, so now I don't need you for that. It taught me to create my own music videos, to learn how to work the cameras, to learn how to edit. You know, so there is no way I'm going to, and like every time, like when I need, what things that they provided for me and that I needed, I no longer need because each time these things happen to me, I tell you, I said, okay, that's not gonna happen to me again. So like Eve, I have problems with cameramen. I said, okay, so what do I need to get these cameras? So I'll get my own cameras, uh, begin to film my own music videos, begin to do everything myself, my own graphics. It's a lot of work, but I tell you what, you don't have the headache. So now that I have created my own music, I have my own distribution as well as working with Paul. I have everything I do myself, even my television show. I do it all myself, all the editing, everything. So now I don't have those issues anymore because they can't come to me with this or they can't come to me dangling carrots. Now it's a different ball game. I'm running the show. You feel me? And those are the challenges. And, and you know, it did nothing but make me grow. It made me grow like, okay, because I think had I not, I'm one of these persons that like to learn everything anyway, but I think had I not went through these experiences, I wouldn't have never learned how to do all these things. And people come to my place and I tell you, they are blown away. And I have to think about, I say, wow, I guess you could be blown away because I really literally do everything myself. I don't want to though. I don't want to, but that's what I do. So I don't have to deal with the extra. Yes. You feel yeah. me? Yes. I, that, I think that leads into my next question, just about um, what does girl power mean to you? How does it inform your music and mm -hmm. the, or the people you choose to interview for your shows, Zayna, Juliet, and Friends? Zayna, Juliet, and Friends. You know, I'm... It means to me power, but I'm not talking about power as in I am woman, men suck, not that kind of power. The other kind of power, self-awareness, being awakened, um, showing strength, learning strength, you know, learning how to speak up. Don't sell your soul to reach your goals. 
it means, you know, and I just came from a situation with a bunch of, bunch of women and I was filming something. We were all talking about this. It's all about your inner spirit, you know, because so in this industry, it's male dominant entertainment industry. And so women, a lot of times, and girls, especially at a younger age, feel almost like they have to do the extra to get to that point. My whole message for girl power is you don't have to dress half naked just to go to an interview and hope that if you're half naked, that's the way you're gonna get it. Because a lot of girls even come to me in auditions when I do my shows, they think that that's what they have to do. They think that if I show skin, they automatically start sending me like half nude pictures because they think that's what they have to do to get to the next level. And um, I teach them that you don't have to do that. You can just be who you are and let your talent speak because you're beautiful anyway. You know, they're gonna see that anyway. You know, and when you show strength in a woman, when you show that strength, you get a lot more respect, you know, and then you're, um, they look at you different. Those are the kind of things that I want to teach women. You don't, oh, it's, it's so frustrating when I think about it because you should see what I see. You don't have to do all this because the moment you give in, you do all these things, they think that they can pull that with everyone and they're going to keep wanting more. And it was confusing, like, wow, is that all there is? You know, I mean, these are people in, high up in the entertainment world would try things like that. And so I think the fact that I would turn them down, the fact that I said no and I stood my ground, I, I gained a whole different respect. They were angry at first, they wanted to hurt me or whatever, but I would always say, you're never going to stop what's destined to be. No one's going to stop what is destined to be. So I go hard. Do you know what I mean? And so a lot of the girls and the people that have come around me, they get inspired by that. You know, they're like, yeah. So my show and my concert is all about, you know, inspiring females empowerment you know you don't have to be like this you don't you can do you can do you can learn all these things yourself you know and they leave and they are very inspired you will be amazed when they come to audition for me a lot of times it's oh i gotta dance sexy because that's what sex sells that's what they this is a this is 2020 that was like back in the 90s and 80s i get it but I teach them to dance strong. You don't have to always be sexy for every little thing, you know, and they feel good. And it shows in my, and then also what's good about the concerts and the shows is that it's open for everyone. You feel me? Like people, I, I put a show on here, Girl Power Concert, and I did it to raise awareness and to help out the Las Vegas rescue mission. And there's a lot of women in there that's battered or run away from their husbands or, you know, going through things. And you know, that was the most, and it was the Girl Power Concert Warriors, you know. And they brought them in a bus and hauled them all over and they dressed them like queens for the day. No one knew where they came from. I never would say where they came from because they're in this training and they're in these programs where they, you know, they're being protected. They have to, and some of them are coming off of drugs or whatever. And after and during the concert, at the end, I should say, they all came up on stage and all of them were crying. They were so inspired. So those are the type of things that I, I put it in the music and I put it in the messages and they were so like empowered till they all did 
positive things and they let me know, oh my God, I got a new car, now I'm working, I've got my own thing, you know, they're all empowered by the message. That's the message was empowerment. Um, because I know what it's like, you know, and you should hear the stories. What, Sander, who has been your greatest teacher in the entertainment industry? Are there any artists, and especially female artists, um, who have had a profound influence on your style, the, your career path? You know, it's interesting because I love the old school artist. I like the new today uh, artist, but my inspiration was, of course, the Jacksons, Michael. I, I like the... Um, I like Aretha Franklin and Marvin Gaye and, you know, those type of artists. Um, to, you know, and I, you know, this is crazy. I love all styles of music. So I love Aerosmith and I love like a lot of the old rock and the new rock. I love opera, opera music. The artist that influenced me a lot was Stevie Wonder, um, Michael Jackson. Uh, oh, I love Bruno Mars of, of today. Beyonce is really great. Uh, Whitney Houston, wonderful artist. Um, but you know who really inspires me is Michelle Obama. And she's not an artist, but she should have been. <laughs> she inspires me a lot. Um, it's her wisdom, her message. Um, I think she inspires most women. Um, I like Oprah Winfrey, you know, those type of people. Tyra Banks, you know, um, yeah, those are, those are, gosh, I'm, I'm missing out. I know there's more. I know there's more. I know there's more. Oh, awesome. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I, 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 I noticed too that uh, July 30th is the official Zayn of Juliet Day in Nevada. What's it like having a day named after you? How do you celebrate Zayn of Juliet that Day? That is what we're working on right now. Well, actually, the big concert I did, that was my celebration. Um, I received the proclamation for actually that entertainment and my girl power movement. So far, I have three proclamations. Uh, the celebration that we're going to do next is um, we're working on a big, doing some big events, um, downtown Vegas, big performance um, with that um, it's going to help autism and mentally uh, challenged children. And um, we're working on that uh, right now, but we want to make this into a big, big event. And so uh, we want, we, right now we got some very powerful people that's all, like they, they're all coming together to make it happen. It's going to be a big, big, like a, you know, on a downtown where Fremont is, where all the people hang out, we're going to make it into a big, big celebration um, this time. And also on April 28th, I'm doing a live concert taping of the whole thing. And it's gonna be exciting and we're gonna have a lot of people coming out. It's gonna be a live taping, but uh, there's gonna be audience there as well. You know, we make a big thing over it. I noticed that you've been involved in more than just music. How does writing a play, hosting a show, performing and recording differ from one another? And how are they similar? As far as, uh, well, they're similar because the same amount of work goes into it and you have to use your creativity. And um, I go into a zone, like I really, Zach, I go into a zone when I'm in my creative mode. And I don't, like sometimes I'll write and I put some beautiful soft frequency music on and I start to write and I tell you when I come out of the zone, I don't even remember writing that. I was like, oh my God, did I write that? It comes from another place. It's the same with the um, show. Sometimes I go into a zone with the editing, you know? I go, oh my God, let me just create this. Let me just, you know, it's not always planned. It's just, it comes from this zone. And it's, it's the same with music. It's the same with acting. It's the same with, um, 
with the TV show, you know, I just go into this mode. And um, a lot of the girls that are in like the dancers and stuff, they, they sometimes they say that I'm woo, Zeta, you're woo out there. But I do, I go, <laughs> I go way out there. It's a Z-Bay.